I hope everybody is going to have a good Thanksgiving, considering everything that's happening. But I found this online from John Pavlovich, and I need to read it. It's an article he read called, Kyle Rittenhouse, Supporters, Convict Themselves. Now, this is done in the past tense, but I'm going to update it since the trial of Kyle Rittenhouse ended with him for his acquittal. Now, just bear with me on this. Yes, Kyle Rittenhouse has been on trial, but so has white America. And, through the former, and though the former may escape justice, the latter will not be so fortunate. The evidence against it cannot be easily manipulated or arbitrarily dismissed. In their breathless advocacy of the heavily armed vigilante, over and over in comment sections, message boards, cable talk shows, Tucker Carson, we're talking to you, Work room, workplace break rooms, kitchen tables, and white Americans have been consistently testified against themselves. Rittenhouse's defenders are a case study in how afflicted with privilege and infected with racism that this nation still is and the electoral gymnastics white people will engage in to justify the violence of people who look and vote just like them and to devalue the lives of those who don't look like them or believe as they do. The cognitive dissociance on display has been staggering. They contend that Rittenhouse felt threatened by a man wielding a supposedly deadly skateboard, but scoff at the notion that anyone would have been terrified enough by a man with an AR-15 to want to disarm him. They justified that his victims were looters and rioters and therefore deserve impulsive termination while making a martyr of Ashley Babbitt, who died as she and thousands of insurrectionists plowed, plagued the Capitol and assaulted police officers. They claimed safe defense for someone who drove an incendiary, to an incendiary situation with a military-grade weapon and a, a defense he would never have acquired had he simply stayed home. They argued that Rittenhouse was justified in killing other people in order to protect property, underscoring the very the disgraced disregard for your human life that his victims were present in Kenosha protesting to begin with. Finding logic here is fruitless. There is no consistent rational thread to the defense of Rittenhouse because they, their gunless and supremacy do not require such unimportant inconveniences and never have. The moment he repeatedly pulled the trigger in a volatile situation he inserted himself into in a high-powered weapon intro into, Rittenhouse became a MAGA folk hero simply because he embodies them. Entitled, violent, and believing himself judge, jury, and executioner. He has become an avatar for the white fragility that has been nestled and the power they imagine is their birthright. While their teenager's laughable sham, sham of a trial, overseen by an unhinged judge whose behavior has been both morally inverted and, moral, and mentally unstable, has been playing out in front of, a, in front of, another, in front of us in America, another trial in Georgia is taking place that highlights the glaring inconsistencies of racism breeds. Ahmed Arbery was unarmed and killed in the streets. Cal Rittenhouse killed two strangers on the street. One is having his character assassinated posthumously, his shooters being painted as good, misguided good Samaritans. And the other is being is benefited by conservative America as a hero who did what was necessary to enforce the law. The outcome of these decisions, as important as they are, 
will not tell the bigger, more alarming story here. In their verdicts, yes. But much has been made in the conversation around them. These trials are exposing the brokenness of our nation. How insidious the, an addiction like racism is. And the fictional stories people will tell themselves in order to contest their uh, to killing or evade accountability. Rittenhouse and his acolytes can't lose. If he was found, this is a hypothetical scenario, and it happens to be true. If he was found guilty in this trial, he would become the poster boy for the perpetual oppressed, righteousness, right freedom fighters they all imagine themselves to be, and giving the Republican Party raw meat to throw at its rage, rage blind base approaching midterm elections in 2022. In the more likely case as for his acquittal, as he was acquitted, he has empowered and emboldened a vast majority of armed white people with cowboy delusions who feel that accountability will never come. It's no surprise that not long after, two, after killing two strangers, wounding another, Kyle Rittenhouse brazenly posted for fo- posed for photos in a Wisconsin bar wearing a t-shirt that says, free as fuck. That's what this nation, he and his supporters want. One where they are all free as fuck to take law into their, ma- law into their own hands, to murder people in the name of protecting property, Police grocery stores and neighborhood streets in combustible situations. Assault capitals and shoot joggers. Terrorize citizens in the name of making us safer. Do whatever they want to do, even if people have to die for them to do it. Kyle Wittenhouse may have been on trial, but so has white America. The verdict is not encouraging. Now, at the time of this video, well, first of all, thanks to John Pavlowitz for this. At the time of this video, we received the, the announcement of the verdict and the three men who killed Ahmed Arbery. Guilty, guilty, guilty. But here are the specifics. Travis McMichael, the man behind the trigger, is guilty of all counts. Now those counts being, of course, malice murder, four counts of felony murder, two counts of aggravated assault, false imprisonment, and criminal attempt to commit a felony. His father, George McMichael, who rode and rode armed in the bed of the pickup truck that his son pursued, Aubrey, is not guilty of malice murder, but is guilty on the other eight charges I just read to you. And the third man, William Rody Bryan Jr., a neighbor who joined the pursuit and filmed that video, is guilty of three counts of felony murder, one count of aggravated assault, false imprisonment, and criminal attempt to commit a felony. However, he was cleared on the charge of malice murder, felony murder involving an aggravated assault with a firearm and the count of aggravated assault with a firearm. These three men, in the rarest occasions, we received true justice in this country. And before anyone gets any kind of delusions into this, let me remind you what these three men did. And let me remind you of what Ahmed Arbery did. Now, it's been thrown out there that Ahmed Arbery may have broken into a house, steal some things, immaterial. If that's the case, the police should have been called. The cops should have been called Justice would have been done. However, they did not, they did call the police, but they took their matters into their own hands. We all heard the news, the, the, the call, the tape. We saw what these men did to him. So did the jury. Now the defense could have, have tried to paint this guy, Ahmed Aubrey, as a cold hard criminal. That's their job, that's what they do. That's what a defense attorney is supposed to do. However, 
The facts are indisputable. Ahmed Arbery was murdered, shot down like a dog, hunted down like a dog, and murdered. So I thank the jury members for doing this because we've received true justice in this nation. Not the flim flam about what we saw with Rat in the house. True justice. Thank you for watching and I hope everyone has a good Thanksgiving. CTP, know the truth, God bless. Peace to the left, justice to the right.